Welcome to Playfully Orange, our conversations about arts and culture here in Central Florida. And my guest today is Jen Vargas. Welcome, Jen. Hello. Thanks for having me, Terry. Well, Jen, you have been very involved in the film scene here locally for many years, but let's find out a little bit about you first. So where do you come from and how did you get involved in film? <laughs> Well, I was born in Los Angeles, California. I was raised here in Orange County, Florida for as long as I can remember. So my, uh, while I'm not a native native, I'm pretty much a, uh, a, a loved transplant. <laughs> How I got started in film, I, I went to school here. I, I went to school, Orange County Public Schools. I went to film school here, graduated, chose to stay here. Um, didn't wanna leave for either coasts um, to continue on, I have a degree in film and television production. And um, yeah, I, I do some things on social media and I love it. Well, when one thinks of making a career in film and television, one thinks of going to California, but you didn't. Why is that? It was a, it was a conscious choice that I made. A, a lot of it had to deal with, um, I was a caregiver for my mother at the time who uh, was going through her first cancer diagnosis. So that was a good reason to stay. Um, also, that's just a big move. <laughs> it's a big company move to move your entire life that you've known from one place all the way across the country to another. And I just, at that time in my life, I just wasn't ready to do that. But you found a niche here in film? I did. So tell us about that. Did you start Film Slam? No, actually, I did not start Film Slam. Film Slam was a idea that was actually brought over from the West Coast, ironically, to Central Florida in 2004 by, I believe he was a UCF student, Jason Neff. Um, he's a local filmmaker, wanted to organize a, a showcase of local films. Because as, as any filmmaker knows, it's very hard to find a space to screen films that's not inside someone's living room, um, a very expensive four wall theater rental, or if you're not attending a school, like it's very hard to um, just find a venue in itself. So once uh, Film Slam came onto the scene in 2004, I think I went to one Film Slam, one of the first ones that was at the Rogers Keene building when it was in downtown Orlando. Um, there was a place that UCF started, a, a screening uh, place called the uh, Digital Media Arts Center. Uh, it was a UCF project. Unfortunately, it concluded a couple of years later, around 2006. Um, the NZN was nice enough to give Film Slam a home uh, for that time. Uh, we were at NZN until 2019. Unfortunately, we lost our, our venue there, but... Orlando Museum of Art welcomed us with open arms in 2020, and then we became a nonprofit, so we could solidify a, a permanent uh, sort of arrangement for filmmakers to have a platform, and we've been there ever since, and we love it. Are there a lot of people making films that need a place to have their films shown? Absolutely. Independent filmmakers, we are low budget, no budget, negative budget. Um, budget is like the dream. So, so to have no budget to make your films, but have really no place to screen them, um, it, it's kind of heartbreaking. I mean, anybody could put a video up on YouTube or Vimeo, but how far is that going really? I mean, how, how many hearts and minds can you reach that you know you're reaching and then have a conversation about it? That's the unique thing about Film Slam is that we're, we're a showcase event for, for filmmakers, all levels, all abilities. We have different kinds of audiences. Uh, we foster community uh, positivity, inclusivity. Um, we encourage experimentation, um, constructive feedback. We have kind of an informal meet and greet with filmmakers that happens after our screenings and after our Q and A's. And a, a lot of that is positive support. And I would not have found out about Film Slam had it not continued on. So I, this is my goodwill gesture to continue on beyond me, and I hope it lasts forever. Well, in the almost 20 years, 18 years that it's been around, has it, do you know of any stories of how it has been a stepping stone to uh, encourage and develop some really good filmmakers? 
Yes, we have filmmakers from different schools. We have hobbyists. We have um, some high school films actually that have submitted. And some of them have gone beyond the Central Florida area and have gone on to uh, bigger film schools, NYU, UCLA, and all work in the industry. There, there are quite a few of them. Um, my personal story is um, just being involved in Film Slam kind of solidified my decision in film school that I was on the right path. And um, my life could have been a lot different had I not um, continued on in film school because there were times where I was really doubting myself and had imposter syndrome. Do I have the skill? There aren't a lot of females in the industry. Am I in the right place? But attending Film Slam and having these conversations with filmmakers and having conversations about different um, events and, and different, um, different uh, opportunities, not just for, you know, just coming on set and, and watching people put together a film or just writing it. I mean, there's opportunity for behind the scenes, uh, photography and videography, there's uh, makeup, hair, there's, there's a ton of departments that you may not think you're trained in, but any, any set of hands are good set of hands in an independent film set because most of the filmmakers are usually wearing many hats. So any help is, is, is good help. Have, how many films have you had in Film Slam over the decades or so? Oh, geez. Well, in the very beginning of Film Slam, we had single digit audiences, which is pretty much single digit films. Um, last month, we had over 60 people in our audience. Um, when we were over at uh, the Inzian before we lost that space, we were average between 80 to 100 people per show. Um, the amount of films is probably, gosh, in the 10,000s at this point. I would add, that's, that's a good question. I was talking about you personally. You personally. Oh, oh me personally? Have you, have you been making films all this time or did you stop making films out of, of college? Oh, no, I, I started making films in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> just little, little, little goofy things. I was part of my, um, I, I did, uh, I wrote my first play when I was in fourth grade and I did it with little Care Bear figurines. And I was, I was allowed to, for some reason, go on our public access channel in my elementary school. So that's probably my first uh, foray into films. I've made several documentaries on um, mainly mainly nonprofits and mainly having to do with uh, cancer. So that's uh, that's my foray into film. I've done some other ones too. I've participated in the 48 hour film project. I did that for 12 years or so. Now I'm a judge. <laughs> and are you seeing a lot of good talent coming in out of this area? Yes, absolutely. There's a, there's a lot of people who the narratives are, are pretty endless and we've lived through some pretty extraordinary times the past couple of years. So to, to see the expressions that have come out of the last two years alone have been um, pretty inspiring, not the easiest watches sometimes because it does deal with people who just being cooped up was very hard for some people and other people loved it. So to see those different points of view from the past two years alone, has been great, but yeah, the the quality of films is wonderful, especially from our high school students. They have some pretty solid narratives that right. they, they submit. So Film Slam, 48 Hour, what are other uh, outlets for filmmakers in, in the area? Well, we do have a migration at Fusion Fest. That's a, an outlet for filmmakers in the fall. There's also Global Peace, there's a central one of our partners, Central Florida Film Festival, that happens in January. Um, Orlando Film Festival. There's little niche ones that have to do with like I think there's one that's called End of Days, that's more, <laughs> more uh, kind of like a suspenseful festival. There's a sci-fi festival in town. There's the Central Florida Urban Film Festival. There's many kinds, many many kinds. <laughs> Well, it's been great talking to you. Oh, one more question. So sure. if there were one thing you would want our community to have related to film that we don't have, what would it be? 
Ooh, that is an easy, that is an easy answer, but not an easy task. I would love for us to have a set infrastructure to bring business to this area. Um, Atlanta, Georgia has done it and they are the opportunities. Everybody there is flourishing and uh, there seems to be no stop in sight for that. Um, to have that here, particularly in Central Florida, or even for the state of Florida, to have that infrastructure, to have that ability to attract that business would only spin off into other areas of not just like tourism and, and local businesses making yeah. money from productions, but that the possibilities are really endless. All right. Well, thanks for your thoughts and great to get to know you a little bit at this issue of Playfully Orange. And thank you folks for watching. Uh, also look for Diverse Orange, my conversations about diversity here in Central Florida.